finger licking good. Hey everybody, this is Russ Carson Jr. with Family Tree Nuts, and I'm at the grave of somebody that I guarantee you, you know about. I'm at the grave of Colonel Harlan Sanders, the KFC guy. Colonel Sanders was born on September 9th, 1890 in Henryville, Indiana. He was the oldest of three children, and his father died when he was only five years old. His mother was very religious and warned the children of the evils of tobacco, gambling, and the horrible sin of whistling on a Sunday. His mother worked at a tomato cannery, and Harlan helped take care of his siblings. When he was 12, his mother remarried, and they moved outside of Indianapolis. Harlan hated his stepdad, and he dropped out of school in the seventh grade. When asked why he quit school, Harlan said it was algebra that drove him off. By age 13, he had left home, and he got a job painting carriages in Indianapolis. And at age 14, he moved to Southern Indiana and New Albany to live with his uncle, and he got him a job as a streetcar operator. In 1906, he was only 16 years old, and he lied about his age and joined the army. He was sent to Cuba and spent a few months as a wagoner. The next year in 1907, he got out of the army, and he moved to where his uncle was now in Jasper, Alabama, and he got a job with the Southern Railway. He worked for the railroad as a blacksmith helper. He cleaned ash pans, was a fireman, and three years later, he was fired for insubordination. This was just the first of many of his failures. He then got a job with the Norfolk and Western Railway, and soon later, he met his future wife, Josephine King. The couple had three children, and his son died at age 20 from blood poisoning from tonsillitis. Soon after that, he worked for the Illinois Central Railroad, and the family moved to Jackson, Tennessee. Here he studied law by correspondence course at the LaSalle Extension University. He got fired from his job yet again for fighting a coworker. And this time his wife had had enough and she moved back in with her parents and took the kids with her. Harlan Sanders eventually graduated and practiced law for three years in Little Rock, Arkansas. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was a lawyer? And just like every other job he had, he failed at this one too. He actually got in a fight with one of his clients in the courtroom, his own client. After that episode, he moved in with his mother in Henryville, Indiana, and worked as a laborer on the Pennsylvania Railroad. By 1916, he had moved to Jeffersonville, Indiana, just across the river from Louisville. Here he sold life insurance for the Prudential Life Insurance Company. What do you think happened at this job? You guessed it, he was fired for insubordination. Then he got another life insurance sales job in Louisville. Harlan invested some money in a business and a few years later cast in his shares for $22,000. That's about $330,000 in today's money. He used his money to start a lamp manufacturing company. The competition ran him out of the business and once again, Harlan Sanders was a failure. Then he moved to Winchester, Kentucky and became a tire salesman for Michelin. In 1924, he lost his job yet again, but he was noticed by the general manager of the Standard Oil Company of Kentucky. He hired him to run a gas station in Nicholasville, Kentucky, and that's where he worked from 1924 until 1930. But unfortunately, in 1930, it was the beginning of the Great Depression, and they had to close down the gas station. Arlen Sanders was yet again a failure. In that same year of 1930, the Shell Oil Company hired him to run a gas station in Corbin, Kentucky. Notice how much he's moved all over the map. His gas station was right on the main drag of Corbin on US 25. It was at this time, in the back of his gas station, he began cooking for customers. The word got out about how good his chicken was, so he opened up a restaurant across the street from his gas station. He also opened up a motel. It was around this time that he began to paint advertisements for his business on barns and signs all around the area. His competition was named Matt Stewart, and he owned a standard oil gas station there in the same town. Stewart kept painting over Harlan signs and painting advertisements for his own business. Sanders got word that Stewart was in the process of painting over one of his signs. Sanders grabbed two Shell executives and headed out to the site to confront Stewart. The conversation got hot real quick and pistols were drawn. Stewart shot the Shell District Manager, Robert Gibson, and then Sanders shot Stewart right in the shoulder. Stewart served 18 years in prison. I guess that's one way to get rid of your competition, shoot him and send him to prison. In 1935, Kentucky Governor Ruby LaFoon tried his chicken and made him an honorary Kentucky Colonel. Now, Governor LaFoon was known for making over 5,000 people Kentucky Colonels. It's what he's known for. 
But imagine if he had not made Harlan Sanders a Kentucky Colonel. In 1939, he developed cooking his chicken in a pressure cooker. It made the chicken have less grease, more flavor, and better texture. In World War II, gas was rationed, so Colonel Sanders went to Seattle to work for a bit. Later, he ran cafeterias at government installations in Tennessee. In 1947, he divorced his wife, Josephine. And then he married one of his employees, Claudia Lettington Price. In 1949 is when he began to embrace his title of Colonel. He dyed his facial hair white and wore a black overcoat everywhere he went, but he soon changed to white due to the flour from the chicken getting all over his black coat. By now his chicken had developed a name for itself and there became a demand all over for it. In 1952, he sold his first franchise to sell his chicken. It was in Salt Lake City of all places. Colonel Sanders made four cents for every chicken they sold and that later went to five cents. That restaurant in Salt Lake City is the one that developed the famous bucket that we're all familiar with. By 1955, Colonel Sanders knew that I-75 was going to be coming through seven miles and bypassing his service station in Corbin. He knew that he would eventually fail at his restaurant and his hotel. After finally having 20 years of decent success, he took his first social security check of $105 and hit the road. From 1955 until 1964, he traveled all over the country opening up Kentucky Fried Chicken franchises. His wife opened up a restaurant in Shelbyville, Kentucky, and she helped to ship the spices all over the country. It was at this time that he got a patent for his pressure cooker and he developed the phrase of, finger licking good. Colonel Sanders was in his late 60s, but he would come to a restaurant and offer to cook his chicken for a couple of days until they realized how well it would take off. In 1964, he reluctantly sold Kentucky Fried Chicken to John Y. Brown and Jack Massey. It took them two weeks to convince Colonel Sanders to sell them the franchise. They guaranteed to never tamper with his recipe and scared him as to what would happen to the franchises if he passed away. He sold them Kentucky Fried Chicken for $2 million and he maintained all the assets of the Canadian Kentucky Fried Chickens and they gave him a salary of $40,000 a year. From 1965 until 1980, Colonel Sanders lived in Ontario, Canada and oversaw the stores in Canada. He made many appearances as the Colonel and he traveled about 200,000 miles a year. Late in life, he became very religious and was actually baptized in the River Jordan in Israel in 1970. In 1975 and 1979, he actually sued Kentucky Fried Chicken and they sued him back. He said that they had turned his gravy into slop, said it was like wallpaper paste. Both times the lawsuits were settled out of court and they have undisclosed details. The last two decades of Colonel Sanders' life, he was never seen in public without his traditional white suit. They say he swore like crazy. He said, I did my cussing before women or anybody else, but somehow nobody ever took offense. Colonel Sanders died of leukemia on December the 16th, 1980 in Louisville, Kentucky. He laid in state at the Rotunda at the Kentucky State Capitol in Frankfort. More than 1,000 people came to his funeral and he's buried right here in Cave Hill Cemetery in Louisville, Kentucky. When he died, there was more than 6,000 Kentucky Fried Chicken franchises in 48 countries. And today it is the second largest franchise behind only McDonald's. So here we are at the graveside of Colonel Harlan Sanders, the man that continued to fail almost all of his life, but he just kept trying and eventually became a world famous icon that everybody knows about and a tremendous success. And that gives a lot of people a lot of inspiration. And the next time that you eat Kentucky Fried Chicken, you'll know the story of the man, Colonel Harlan Sanders. And remember, family tree nuts, let our nuts find the nuts in your family tree. Like what you see? Make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the little bell so you get notifications as to when we post new videos.
And you can find out more about us and contact us at familytreenuts.org.